everyone. So today I have another story time for you guys. And this one right here is one of the ones that I would say is a bit more trippy because of the fact that it involves um, contact with a specific race of extraterrestrials known as the Greys. Now, there might be some of you who are familiar with them um, and that actually like them. I've, I've, you know, I've met some people who actually like them and, and have established communication, have worked with them, have gotten certain sigils and runes from them. I will just say this right now. I wouldn't say that I trust them, you know, as far as I can throw them. That's just how I feel about it. Um, I did, however, get a very um, interesting insight on, you know, uh, you know, working with their technology, you can say. So. I remember that I was having a, you know, I was having a rest, you know, uh, it, it was, it was, it was the middle of the night. I, I wouldn't say that I was kind of tired. I was more so napping. And during this nap, I ended up moving into, you know, uh, a, a semi dream state. I left my body. I ended up on this boat. Um, it looked like I was in Italy if, or something on one, you know, probably in Venice. On this uh, boat, there was one of the, um, I don't know what, what we, you would call him. I don't know what to call him. I think they're called, a, um, I would just say he's like the chauffeur of the boat. <laughs> uh, I started getting very eerie vibes about this guy. And the reason why I was starting to get eerie vibes is because of the fact that he was moving the boat so fast to the point where we were just flying down this stream of water, looking around, didn't really get any time to see everything that was there. At the time, it was um, I was on this boat with one of my, uh, you know, past um, connections that's what I'll say. I won't say anything more because this person isn't relevant, nor are they important. Um, moving down on this boat, I'm just thinking to, I start to think to myself, why are we going so fast? And why is this guy not turning around? Why doesn't he have any concern for my safety? So see, this is something that I tend to do when it comes to um, dreams that are getting out of whack. And uh, dreams that aren't making sense to me. It gets me to that point where I realize that I know that I'm dreaming. Once you know you're dreaming, that is when you can achieve lucidity. Whether it be using triggers, whether it be utilizing, you know, um, energies of, you know, your mind. Whether it be sights that you see that are within the air. Whether it be, you know, thoughts that you project into yourself before you go to sleep using affirmations. There are many of types of ways that you can achieve this. But I myself, I tend to use triggers like weird, whimsical things that you wouldn't uh, tend to see in a waking reality. Thus pointing out that that is not a real um, depiction of what your waking reality is. Uh, in this case, I was using my thoughts. And questioning everything that was going on. I noticed the water. I noticed everything. I realized that. How the hell am I in Italy? I didn't get a ticket. I didn't do anything like this. I couldn't possibly really be there. Um, you know, I think I started thinking about the fact that I couldn't, I couldn't afford at the time to even, you know, be on one of these boats. You know. You know, let alone be in Italy. I also thought to myself that I called this guy's name numerous times. He had not turned around, right? After the, yeah, I would say after about the sixth time that I called this guy's name, I decided, you know what, forget this. I'm going to find out what's going on. So I reached out and I grabbed him. And once I grabbed him, he turned around and he was a an extraterrestrial. He was a gray. The entire simulation 
of the reality of Italy shattered like glass. I heard glass shatter. I don't know if any of you experienced this when you're um, in a dream state or if you have experienced any sounds of glass shattering within your dreams. But that seemed like an indicator to me that this was a, a assimilation, but not only a, not only was it assimilation, it was a complex attack. So after I noticed that this glass shattered, I start looking around and everything is just white, right? So it's like I'm encompassed in this complete white room. And I know, you know, some of you might think, okay, yeah, it's a white light. It's okay. You're safe. No, because what I saw next creeped me the hell out. What I saw next was the guy that was on the boat. He just, com the clothes were gone. He completely disappeared. The boat crashed into the one of the white walls and the wall came open. We were then able to get out of this boat and walk, you know, into this place. As I walked into this room, I saw a line of little guys that were probably about three, you know, ranging from anywhere about three to about four foot one in height. They weren't that tall. Big bulbous heads, really big eyes. Um, it didn't really look like they were eyes, though it looked like they were kind of protectors over their eyes, carrying these huge spheres of energy, green, red, blue, yellow, everything, and putting them into this projector of sorts. So I walked up to, you know, this line of all of these uh, beings, and I realized that, you know, I, for a second, was not uh, able to be detected. I don't know how I did that, but I was able to not be detected because I hadn't put any attention into that. So it had me questioning what exactly, you know, had happened or if I was getting some kind of assistance, which it doesn't tend to happen often with me um, in the astral realm unless I'm calling to a specific spirit. At this point, I had not called to anyone. And so as I approach this line and looking at all these guys, I start to get a feel for their stature. I see their bodies and their tiny little arms. It's just these really small arms and really long fingers. They don't really have uh, feet. The feet were kind of just these long strands and they were um, gray. Like a, I would say the texture looked as if, you know, when you look at a dolphin's skin, when a dolphin is out of the water, this is what their bodies look like. And they had no belly buttons, no nipples, no, you know, physical features that uh, you could tell the sex of any of them. I, I, I did not know what was what or who was who. All I knew that these, is that these were, in fact, actual extraterrestrials that were in my presence. Not to say that I hadn't experienced any extraterrestrials before because I'm known for these kind of things. And my astro adventures always consist of um, interaction with any spirits and also, you know, ETs that are in a higher realm. But these guys in particular were really strange to me because of these spheres. So because I realized, OK, yeah, I, I, they couldn't see me. I walked up to the projector. And that's where I messed up because once I walked to this projector, um, I was no longer invisible. I was no longer incognito. And all of them ended up turning to me and looking at me. Once they looked at me, um, I, I don't know why, but I looked at the projector. And when I looked at the projector, I started to see these lights being projected to specific parts of the globe. Their projector was kind of like a, um, a sphere, and it was the perfect shape of each of those colors, uh, colorful spheres that they had, to where they could put it in there, and it would be a perfect fit, almost as if it was a protective layer or coating. I saw specific um, places that were on the Earth or this planet that resembled the Earth that were being projected um, pictures onto specific plots of land. Now... At this point, I didn't, I don't know still to this day, whether or not these were projections of dreams, which, you know, they quite possibly could be because this is what I was experiencing, you know, 
I, I also wonder what would have happened had I not achieved lucidity, you know, to be able to break out of this uh, false reality. Um, so I see these projections being sent onto all these places and areas around the world. Each one of them was putting in a different sphere. And once I reached out to try and get a feel for this projector, I was then approached by two of these guys, you know, of, of these uh, extraterrestrials that then pushed me. And once they pushed me, uh, I started to feel a sensation of falling. Then I came to the realization that I was now being pushed back into my body. I was pushed, you know, not even violently. They just pushed me slightly and I fell back in my body. I, I awoke and looked around. There was no one there. It was just pitch black in my room. And, you know, then I went to look up, you know, what this technology could be. And the only thing that really came up was, you know, false reality or, you know, the matrix. Now, I, I don't want to get, you know, anyone confused. And I don't want to say that that's what I, you know, um, you know, that's what I feel fully that this was because at that time I wasn't really confident in it and I hadn't put much thought into it after I had had the experience because these tra these uh, experiences can be semi freaking traumatic for myself and they send me onto this freaking um, tangent of just random thought and panic and also just <laughs> sheer uh, states of absolute chaos within my brain i would say it took about three days for me to you know calm down after i'd done the research and everything and um i processed what had happened finally and i came to you know the you know i i just came to the the thought of and believe that this is actually the greys that I had encountered. Now, this wasn't even a first time that I had encountered them. This was a more in-depth encounter of them, um, is what we can say. You know, comment below what you guys think of this experience, because this freaking blew me away. I, you know, I, I still don't know what to think about it, but I want to put it out there so you guys can tell me what you think. Until the next video, guys.